This is Precalculus A, Unit 5 on Exponential, Logarithmic, and Piecewise Functions. This is Lesson 1, Exponential Functions and Graphs. I want to examine, to start with, a couple of uh, tables. <coughs> XY tables, if you like. T tables. I'm going to put in 0, 1, 2, and 3, and 4. Okay, and I'm going to put in some Y values. We're going to start with 5, then we're going to go to 7, 9, 11, and uh, 13. Okay, and then I'm going to compare this to another table here, x, y. And I'm going to have the same domain values, 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. But this time my y values, my output values, are going to be 5, 10, 20, 40, 80. Now, aside from the, the output values being much larger uh, in the second case, I want you to take a look at the numbers and see if you can tell what rules I was following in generating the output Okay, while I draw these lines. What rules was I following while generating these output numbers? <clears throat> So hopefully you've had a chance to figure it out. If you want to pause the video, you can. Okay. In this case, I started with 5, and I added 2 every time. Added 2 every time. Added 2 every time. Added 2 every time. Okay, and that's known as a recursive definition. So we start with 5, we add 2, and then continue to add 2 repeatedly to generate all the, all the output values in the series. We can generally generalize this relationship this way. If I put in x, right, if I put in x, I get out y equals, y equals 5, plus 2x, right? You may recognize that as 2x plus 5. And hopefully recognize that this is a linear function that graphs as a line. Okay? All right, so let's generalize this one here. The, you may have noticed that the start value, start value is 5 again, same start value, but that the rule I was following is not to add to, but to multiply to repeatedly. Multiply to, multiply to, multiply to. Okay, now let me expand this out here. So I started with 5. Then I did 5 times 2. Then I did the previous answer times 2 again. Then I did the previous answer times 2 again. Then I did the previous answer times 2 again. Let's say I go out to here, oh, and multiply to, multiply to, okay? And let's, let's say I rewrite these, rewrite these, missing a times two, rewrite these using exponents. You may recognize that this is five times two to the fourth power, that this is five times two to the third power that this is 5 times 2 to the second power, that this is 5 times 2 to the first power, and check it out, that this is 5 times 2 to the 0 power, okay? And this is good, good verification that the 0 power, anything to the 0 power is 1, right? Well, more generally, we can write a general rule that x, we can input the x, but the y, the y value is the start value, 5, the y value is 5, 5, times 2 to the power of x, okay? Notice the similarities, right? We have a start value, and also when you graph it is the y-intercept, and we've got, instead of a addition term, a slope, we've got a ratio, a multiplier, okay? A ratio or a multiplier. Let's look at the look at a graph of this in Desmos here. So let's pull up Desmos, not Des least, but Desmos. 
Boom, 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 boom. All right, here we go. And let's graph, let's graph this function here. I'm gonna graph the, uh, the continuous function instead of the, uh, just the, the whole numbers here. So y equals five times two to the x. Now you'll notice there's a bit of a ski jump effect going on here. And our function doesn't even start until five. And it goes up to 80, right? So let's, uh, let's set the scale here to go for that range. So zero to five for x and y from zero to 80. Okay, and there we go. So we have this kind of ski jump uh, uh, approach here. Instead of a line, it's a curve, all right? And as we look at the left-hand side of it, it goes it tends towards zero. So it, it behaves on the left end asymptotically going towards zero. It has an, a horizontal asymptote on the left. On the right, it goes off to infinity, okay? Some points to note here. First is that it goes through five. The second is to note that it doubles 10, 20, 40, 80 every time we move over one, right? So every time we move over one, it doubles. Going to the left, every time we move to the left, it halves. Half of 80 is 40, half of 40 is 20, half of 20 is 10, half of 10 is five, half of five is two and a half, 2.5, and so on. Half of 2.5 is one and, one and three quarters, right, 1.75. So that pattern will continue. And if we go halfway towards zero, we'll always tend towards zero and never quite get there. So it behaves asymptotically. This is the hallmark of an exponential function. Okay. So a couple of things that we want to be able to do with, with an exponential function. So in general, an exponential function is, is in the form y equals a b to the x, okay. where a is the start value or the y-intercept and b is the multiplier, or we'll call it the ratio, okay? Now I want you to notice something here. I'm gonna play around with some values here in Desmos, okay? So I'm gonna say y equals a b to the x, okay? And I'm gonna add sliders for a and b, <coughs> and we're gonna go back to the standard scale here, and uh, let's, let's move things down a little bit here. Okay, so, as a, as a changes, the y-intercept changes, right? So if I want to start with start at 2, I change the a to value to start at 2. As b goes up from 1, <coughs> it gets steeper and steeper and steeper because we're changing the multiplier. Now I'm multiplying by 3 every time. Now I'm multiplying by 4 every time, so it gets steeper. As v goes down, it reaches a point when it equals 1, when we end up with a perfectly horizontal line, because 1 to any power is just 1. But something very interesting happens when v gets less than 1, 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.7. Okay? It's actually going down. The ski jump has, has inverted itself. Okay? And we end up with a little bit of a problem when v reaches 0, because uh, we, we have difficulty raising 0 to a power. What does it even mean to raise zero to a power? It's actually one of our irresolute uh, uh, calculations. It's one of those things that we actually cannot do because it technically involves dividing by zero. And when v is negative, we get all kinds of problems because when you raise a negative to an even power, you get a positive answer. When you raise a negative to a positive power or an odd power, you get a, you get a negative number. And when you raise it to a decimal power, who knows what happens? <laughs> Right, so we it, it gets so chaotic that it really can't can't be calculated. All right, so one of the things that we want to bear out, and you learn this in your pre-calculus course and your algebra course here, is that uh, if b is greater than one, we have exponential growth. If b equals one, we have static or constant. And which is kind of a boring case. If b is between 0 and 1, we have decay, exponential decay. Okay, And uh, don't have enough time to go through some examples of that. <clears throat> 
but uh, there are some things that we need to do. We need to be able to work with rules of exponents. Okay, so you learn the rules of exponents in your algebra class. So we're going to review some of those. So even a, an exponential function that's not in exponential form, a, b to the x form, can be converted to that. So let's take an example here. Uh, let's say we have y equals 7 to the 3x plus 2. Okay, we can use this rule, a to the n times a to the m equals a to the n plus m, but we'll use it backwards. a to the n plus m is a to the n times a to the m. So 7 to the 3x plus 2 is 7 to the 3x times 7 to the 2. Okay, and then we can use this rule, a to the n to the m is a to the n m. But we're going to use it backwards again. So when we have a power that's a product, an exponent that's a product, it can be broken up as a product of, as a power of powers. So this is 7 to the third to the x. Okay, and let's put the 7 squared in front, and we get y equals 49, and 7 to the third, who knows what that is. I don't have that in my head, so I'm going to use a calculator. 7 to the third. 343. So times 343. And lo and behold, there's our value of A, 49, and our value of B, 343. So using these rules of exponents, you can convert uh, uh, all kinds of things into exponential form if they truly are an exponential function. Okay. One more thing, one more thing to bring in, and that is the base of a natural logarithm. Now, the base of the natural logarithm is e, and e comes from a number of places. Uh, I found it interesting that uh, the, the book gave you, or the lesson gave you, the uh, infinite expansion for e, which basically is 1 over n factorial, the sum of 1 over n factorial from n equals uh, 1 or 0 to, uh, to infinity, right? Uh, and we won't go into that, but uh, where, where it, it, it comes into economics as well. You may be familiar with the compound interest formula. A1 plus R over N to the NT. There's a part of this that actually works out to E, to the value E, 1 plus 1 over N to the value of N. The limit as N goes to infinity in other words, as the number of compounding periods goes off to infinity, we actually get e. And e is just a number. It's just a number. It's approximately 2.718282. Okay? And it's an irrational number, so it is. it goes forever, it doesn't repeat, and so on and so forth. Uh, so, but the, we love to use it because it has some special properties that, that lend themselves to some great things with, with, uh, with the exponential functions, particularly when it comes to taking the derivative or taking the integral when you take calculus. All right. And so here's the value of e, and here is 1 plus 1 over n to the n. Okay. And I'm going to add it, and I'm just going to put in some values for n. So I'm going to say n equals 9. Right, you get 2.58, 99, 2.70, 999, 2.716, 2.718814, 2.718216, 2.718228, 2.718281, 10.3, and now it starts getting off. What's happening actually is we're running out of the buffer that the calculator can handle. <laughs> so that's about as accurate as Desmos is going to get, get it for us. But the limit, trust me, the, the actual limit is the exact value of E. 2.718282 thereabouts, right? All right. So that's kind of an introduction to, to uh, exponential uh, functions.